the last Bugatti Bolide has been delivered. Why is this significant? Because this channel started back in 2021 because the Bolide was announced. It was a project where Bugatti basically gave the share on construction to race car expert Dallara in Italy and said, turn this into something great. And while the Veyron was the first one of a new kind and redefining the world of supercars, the Chiron was a more careful successor and it felt like it left potential on the table. And then Dallara showed with the Bolide what is possible with the concept. The Bugatti story started with one of Pierre's short Easter holidays on the Spanish island Mallorca. At the time he tried with VW to buy Rolls Royce slash Bentley. So he showed his youngest son Gregor a scale model of Rolls Royce in one of the shops. But his son liked the car next to it better. It was a Bugatti Atlantic. So Pierre got the idea of buying Bugatti, just in case the Rolls Royce slash Bentley deal should fail. After Bugatti was struggling after the EB110 project, Porsche secured the naming rights for Bugatti, with the idea to sell the new upcoming Cayenne as Bugatti, because it was so different to existing Porsches and they felt a Porsche SUV could hurt the brand. But Porsche realized that this two-brand strategy wouldn't be a good idea and they gave the naming rights back to Artioli, who created the EB110 before. So Piech organized a budget, which was a lot smaller than the one he had for the Bentley deal, negotiated with Artioli and realized that the Bugatti naming rights were widely spread, even to mass articles like clothes, umbrellas and so on. VW tried to pick up all the naming rights, because if you sell top-notch supercars, you don't want the name on cheap mass products. They could secure most of them, but not all of them. And that's the reason you can still buy Bugatti jeans to this day. Anyway, Piech wanted to position Bugatti where it has been in the 1920s and 1930s, at the top of automobile design. His requirement list was breathtaking for the VW engineers. 1000 horsepower, 400 km per hour, all-wheel drive, mid-engined and easy to drive like a Golf. For VW engineers at the end of the 1990s that seemed crazy and unachievable. In a time where a supercar had 600 horsepower and a top speed of 330 km per hour. They first worked on an 18 cylinder engine and finally designed a W16 engine, which in fact is a VVR with 4 turbochargers, 8 liter displacement, and 1001 horsepower. They took the packaging from the Diablo with the gearbox in front of the engine, which allows a decent diffuser at the back, but pushes the passengers further apart. The gearbox was a dual clutch design built for 1250 Nm, which was an extreme challenge back in the day. Because the Veyron should drive as easily as a Golf and should be as usable as other VAG cars, it had to pass the same tests, which was especially challenging for cooling. The car had 10 radiators, two cooling circuits with 40 and 15 liters. Michelin had to design new tires especially for the Veyron. The cars were built in Molsheim, France, which belonged to Germany in 1909 when Ettore Bugatti founded the company after he worked for Deutz in Cologne. The Veyron was supposed to start production in 2002, the last year of Piech as VW CEO, along with the best off-road SUV, the Touareg, and the best luxury car, the Phaeton, and while driving to the last shareholder meeting with the one-liter car. But the design challenge of the Veyron was too big. In contrast to his other milestones, the Veyron was delayed multiple times and rumors came up the project could never be finished, since Piech is no longer at the top. But he was still in the background as chairman of the board and the Veyron started production in 2005. When it came out, people realized that it was worth the wait. The Bugatti defined a new category, set above all other supercars in terms of performance but also in terms of price. And the Veyrons ran for this category pretty reliably and were very easy to drive. Now many special versions followed for the next 10 years. Piech saw the trouble and mess in the US market with diesel engines coming up and wanted to fire VW CEO Wintercon in April 2015. Everyone turned against Piech and he left VW two weeks later. Five months after, the diesel scandal started. The successor of the Veyron, the Bugatti Chiron, was still presented in February 2016. It was an evolution of the Veyron with now 50% more power but also 100 kg more weight and more than double the price. Since Piech left the company, the management tried to get rid of his projects. 
Tuareg, Cayenne and Q7 were now put on Audi's longitudinal platform with no special off-road capabilities. The Phaeton was left without a successor and was then stopped. The Lesane Manufaktur in Dresden, the exclusive production plan for Phaeton and Bentley, was used for VW's electric cars and is now for sale. And VW wanted to get rid of Bugatti. But before they did this, they wanted to see what the concept is capable of. So they gave it to Dallara. The Italians positioned the passengers lower, changed to air-to-air -air intercoolers and created an extreme aero package for track use. Power was increased to 1850 horsepower, but then reduced to 1600 horsepower for standard pump fuel with 98 octane. Delara built a chassis for the LMH and LMDH hypercar regulations with built-in cooling pipes which also work as side impact structure. The weight could be reduced by 500 kg. In terms of aerodynamics, the Bolide has a much lower front, a curved windshield to avoid separations and many nice design details. Development for customer use took three more years and delivery started at the end of 2024. Within 12 months, they delivered 40 cars to customers for prices starting at 4 million euro. So the Bugatti Bolide was the top development of the Veyron concept, which showed that this platform was capable of. Bugatti could sell this concept for 20 years and now, when it was time to do the transition to electric drivetrains, which would have cost VW lots of money, they sold it to the probably best person car enthusiasts could wish for, Marte Rimac. But instead of turning Bugatti fully electric, he turned the next generation into a technical piece of art. And you can learn all about the Bugatti Tourbillon in my other videos below. Let me know how you like the Bugatti Bolide and the rebirth of the Bugatti brand in the comments below and become a B-Sport Club member for early access and more videos like this. See you at the next one.